So if you, if you have a bunch of clients that are not, not so great, um, there might be a common thread there that you don't, don't realize and needs to kind of take a look in the mirror. But I think one of the things is like, you don't, you don't deserve to be abused, right? And I think that you get to the point in your career, and my staff knows this too. I mean, we have a very much a three strikes and you're out. Everybody's entitled to have a bad day and treat one of my staff members poorly once. They let me know about it. Second time it happens, I address it with the client. If it happens a third time, then we, we fire the client. Because my employees deserve to have a happy work environment, especially when they're spending the majority of their working hours with me. So I think there's things that you have to be willing to walk away from because you have people that, that want all your free advice and your free time. And if you say, look, I'll spend 10 minutes with you and answer a couple of questions, but then you have to draw the line and say, you know, if you want to engage in a consulting conversation, you know, here's what my, uh, my hourly rate is. I'll send you over the engagement contract type of thing. So these are the things that I get paid for outside of. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Sure. I've got a, um, we got a question for you sure. and, uh, yeah. along those lines and getting paid for your time, but also um, kind of integrating, going back to the boomer, or sorry, the millennials. You know, what if you're the boss? This is from Taylor Collins. What if you're the boss and the only millennial in the office? How do you motivate the boomers and older generations to migrate to online efficiency? For like <laughs> Um, put them on the committee to find the product. Um, you know, I think that's one of the things is, um, and I'll tell you, like, I, um, I think boomers and things like that, I think they're excited about technology. And, you know, there, a lot of times there, there's training, but I think you got to bring them along. And I also have seen when you have, you know, say, you know, the millennials and paired up almost in a mentor mentee relationship, because then the mentee can also teach the mentor. And I think that can be hugely inspirational to, you know, say somebody that's looking at retirement in five to 10 years, because they want to shape the, the next generation. And I think that the millennial can drastically learn from there. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, so th here's some things that I get paid for outside insurance. And so I think that a lot of times you have to think outside the box when it comes to this stuff. So, you know, I look at like insurance advising on products with no commission. So in the state of New York, when it comes to individual insurance, there's only a, a couple of carriers that will pay us to place the insurance. Um, most of it is we're not getting paid at all. So what we, we started doing, and we started doing this back when the ACA came around, is we said, okay, we're gonna charge an hourly fee. And we've learned a lot along the way. Um, so we started out with doing that where it was, uh, I think our first rate was like 125 bucks an hour and we prorated it. So if somebody took, you know, 20 minutes, they were only paying a portion of that. And then we were like, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. And so then the next year we did a one hour minimum. And then the, the next year we kind of bumped it up a little bit. And then we also have like the high time where it's, um, I kind of call it the idiot tax. If you wait until the, the final two days before open enrollment, then you're going to pay a two hour minimum type of thing, you know, supply and demand. So that's been something that we've started doing that we get brokers from all across the country that send us their individual clients because they just don't know, you know, what to do with them. And um, the other thing is, you know, I, we do a lot of group benefits. And so I always say, you know, groups that want to date, but they're not ready to get married. So one of the things that I always say to those people is um, a lot of times, I mean, everybody's done it, right? You put together a beautiful strategy, you're so pr proud of it. And then what do they do? They take it back to their broker or their advisor, and then they implement all your hard work. Everybody's had that happen and it sucks. So one of the things that we've started doing is say, you know what, we're happy to, um, to spend the time on this. However, you know, we get paid one of two ways. We either get paid where you assign this account over to us and we get commission dollars and paid by the carrier, or if you want to like just kind of date us and see, you know, dip your toe in the water and see what it looks like, then we can do a consulting type of agreement with you where we can take, you know, take all the information, develop a strategy. And if you want to take that strategy back to your broker and implement it, go right ahead. Um, I th think the people that I kind of, that are always cues for me on this or is my brother-in-law is my broker. My, my cousin's my broker. You know, those are the guys that they're just wanting like an extra pair of eyes to make sure their family members doing right by them. But you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to, you want to get paid for your time. Um, advisory boards and boards of directors. So that's something that I always tell people that these are great opportunities. You just need to know how to pitch it. So if somebody contacts you on LinkedIn and they say something like, Hey, Cheryl, you know, I want to pick your brain on this. I'm starting a new company. I just want to know what you think. 
Okay, so anytime somebody says something like that to me, that's a cue that I can pitch myself as an advisory board member. So, you know, when they come into the office or I meet them for coffee and anytime somebody's like, I want to pick your brain, you know, they're, they're talking about, and a lot of times it's going to be, I do a lot of that stuff in insurance tech um, because they want to have a broker's perspective or insurance carriers. I, I'm on a couple of advisory boards for some of those too. So, you know, anytime somebody says that and then you have the conversation, then halfway through it, you kind of say, have you ever thought about having an advisory board? Well, if this is a young startup, they might be like, no, what is that? What are you talking about? And you can even offer to help develop for them. So it's kind of like putting together their own board of directors of business professionals that have been around, you know, the bend a little bit and can give some solid business advice. You know, a CPA is good to have on there and an attorney is good to have on there. You know, people that, you know, maybe they're not your practice partners, but they're, they can give you an outside perspective. So, you know, a lot of times with things like that, you know, they might pay you like an hourly fee for your time, whether it's like getting together um, for the board meetings and then doing some outside work or they might offer like some uh, type of ownership in the company. The only thing I'll cautious, uh, cautious you on, on the, um, the uh, shares of the company, the shares are only good if the company's gonna sell. So a lot of times they'll be willing to give you, you know, a thousand shares in their company or something like that. But if it's never going to sell, what did you really get? So th those are just, you know, a couple things to think about when you're kind of going through that. Um, speaking is another thing. I know that there's a lot of people with NAFA that you guys speak publicly. I know Cheryl speaks a lot publicly too. So those are things that, that you can always look, don't, don't devalue yourself. I mean, I'll, I'll get to some unsolicited advice later. And one of the things my mother always said is, you know, if you don't value your time, no one else will. So, you know, speaking at, you know, different uh, industry things or conferences, you know, you can usually get some, you know, some sort of speaker fee or, you know, look at, what's in it for you. So a lot of times there's um, state conferences or national conferences that I might agree to just have my expenses picked up because I know I'm gonna have a learning component there. So if it's going to a national conference that I wanted to go to anyway, but now I'm not paying for the registration fee and they're picking up my flight and they're picking up my hotel, then it's just my time, right? So it's my hourly rate on my time that's being spent, but if I'm using it as a professional development opportunity, that could be something that's a win-win for me. Um, and then lastly, the expert witnessing thing. I mean, that's a huge portion of my time now. Um, so I'm, I'm nationally known on, on that type of stuff. So I'm, um, I work on high-end medical malpractice um, lawsuits as well as workers' comp and high-end trip and fall. So what does that mean? So basically anytime somebody gets injured, um, there's like me and this other guy in, in DC that's not an insurance person that comes in and says like, okay, this is, this is what's needed for this person um, in terms of, you know, doctors, drugs, equipment, what have you for the rest of their life. Um, but if you run this through insurance, what would it really cost? So if it's saying you need $52 million, but if we run it through insurance, like what does it cost? Um, so I do a lot of work with that. And then usually like my evaluations then get um, put into present value by an economist. And then somebody like, you know, one of you guys in NAFA that does, you know, maybe some like annuitization of a settlement to get it brought down even more. So it's, it's very much a strategy type of thing. Um, so anytime uh, you're, you're known in your industry and I, and I, and that came to me that fell in my lap about five years ago. Um, I have the, as Cheryl mentioned, the Papaka designation and I'm a good marketer. So um, a very large law firm contacted NAHU, another insurance organization, and said, who do you recommend? Because we're thinking about using this as a litigation strategy and it's just gone from there. So I've um, handled lawsuits in 38 different states. Um, so it's something that I don't do a lot of work in New York, which is kind of funny for that, but, um, but everywhere else. So something to kind of keep in mind um, if you ever have, don't be afraid of that. So um, if you have any interest in like the expert witness and you're like, how do I get into it? Or, you know, what kind of documents do I need to develop it before I pitch myself on that stuff? Let me know. I'd be happy to help you out with that because there's, there's certain ways to do that for sure. Cheryl, are there any questions on this? Well, no questions exactly. Um, you know, you had kind of elaborated on the fees and I know someone had, um, Shalita had a question on um, going into more depth about being a consultant or I'm sorry, consulting fee, charging a consultant fee. Mm -hmm. And then we really had a comment from Taylor Collins again. She says, find a niche and be an expert. Yep, absolutely. Well, and like with the consulting fees, I mean, um, feel free to connect with me. I mean, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I will say if you just try to connect to me and you don't tell me who you are, I'm, I'm going to delete you. But if you say, hey, I heard you at NAFA, Florida, then I'm happy to 
to connect with you and I love to brainstorm and, you know, happy to support you that way. Um, you know, with the fees, I mean, we do have different fees. So we have $185 an hour for the individual consulting for um, the like the products like we do um, strategy and risk management for um, say property and casualty type of things, that's 250 an hour. And then the expert witness is 375 an hour and trial is 500 an hour. So, you know, you have to have like the, the different tiers, I think, because it's based upon, you know, what the work that's actually being done. Okay. So we're gonna shift gears a little bit. So like, this is the fun stuff. If you follow me on social media, you know, I, I love, I love the, the strategy and things like that. So, you know, uh, so <laughs> what this, this picture actually represents is, um, so I spoke at a um, university here in New York, I don't know, a couple years ago. And, um, and it, there was a woman that was a CFO of a large insurance or of a large um, computer company that, um, and I remember her being up there and she said, don't roar after the kill. You know, she's just like, you know, you don't want to be braggadocious and things like that. And I'm sitting at a table, you know, with a bunch of college kids and I'm like shaking my head and I get up on the platform and I said, freaking roar after the kill. If you don't roar for yourself, nobody else is going to roar for you. So, you know, I think that those are some things that we have to kind of look at in a, a different light. Um, so the first thing I'll tell you, and these are like, these are my, this is my playbook, right? When it comes to social media. So some of you guys might've known Noozle um, at, at some point, maybe like, I don't know, four years ago, it's now owned by LinkedIn. So um, you know how you get those emails from LinkedIn that says like, hey, um, you know, did you know what just happened with Joe? You know, or, or you know, what it, you know, he was just in this article. He was just, you know, promoted, things like that. So anytime you get those notifications, those are great opportunities to give a roar for somebody else. So it's a great way to repost that information. And, and it's easy. I mean, you, it's, it's people that are in your contacts in LinkedIn or you wouldn't be getting the email. Haro. Um, I usually I like ask people to raise their hands on this, but Haro, if you don't, if you're not signed up for Haro, you are missing the boat. It stands for help a reporter out. So what that is, is it's um, you usually get an email. You can sign up however much you want. Usually you get one in the morning and you get one in the afternoon and it's, it's reporters that are looking for sources. So I will tell you, you need to know how to respond to a reporter. If you respond like an insurance person, you're not going to get picked. If you respond like, you know, reporters want you, you're going to get picked. So a lot of times, you know, with that, what they'll do is they'll, they'll tee it up and they'll say, um, you know, looking for an insurance expert um, to talk about things they should consider during COVID, you know, something like that. Or, um, and so if I respond, usually I try to provide a link to a video that has me speaking. Um, so, or, you know, I guess a better example would be like, um, you know, how to cut costs for insurance for business owners, something like that. So then what I'll do is I'll respond and say, you know, hey, Cheryl, you know, just saw that you were looking for an expert on this. You know, we do this on a daily basis, you know, helping you know, people cut costs with their insurance below are a few links um, to that exact topic. Let me know if I can be of any help. That's it because they're going to read that and then they're going to look at the, the links with the videos because then it provides like some context and it makes you a person. So then they see, okay, this is how she speaks. This is her candor and I, I can get behind her. If you start getting some of those reporters to use you, then you'll be their go-to person. But instead of like posting on Haro, they'll come back to you. Um, I would also encourage you to look at things a little bit different. Don't just scan it for insurance things. Look at pitching yourself in a different light. So if somebody is saying, oh, I'm, I'm doing a story on business owners and, and how to cut costs, right? You know, didn't say anything about insurance, but I could respond to that and say, hey, have you thought about looking at this from the insurance point of view? And then it gives them like another avenue. Um, so, you know, those are things and that's completely free. Um, so I will tell you, like you can get a little inundated with the emails, um, but the other kind of cool thing is too, is if you see one that's applicable for one of your clients or one of your networking partners, then you send it to, over to them and that builds some social capital with your networking partners too. So um, take a look at that. I mean, if you have say a junior person in your office, I mean, that would be a great thing to, to put, put a millennial on, not so much to respond to it, but to kind of scrub through the list and like send it over to you and say like, hey, Robert, I think, um, I think you should respond to number 47 type of thing, okay? Felt. Do you guys know about felt? Felt is a cool thing. Felt, and I should put punk post on here too. So felt and punk post are um, like almost like a, it's a digital greeting card thing that mails a physical card to people. 
So felt is kind of cool where it's like you have an app, you know, you load in the person. And so if you have, say, you just met with a client or say a client just emailed you and said like, oh, we just had a baby. We're super excited type of thing. Man, you can go right. And she, say she sends you a picture of the baby. You can go to felt. You can upload the picture of the baby, put it on the card and have it mailed out. You know, so it just, and it's so personal and so cool. And it's done in handwriting. Punk post is the other one, P-U-N-K post and punk post is done by artists and I'll tell you that is cool man I, like I can't tell you how many people love the punk post things because you can say how you want it to be so you can say if you want it to be like the the artwork if you want it to be sweet or you want it to be fun or you want it to be more formal that it'll do calligraphy and then you can even give notes and say like hey um, so I'm also a, a hospice volunteer and I'm not able to see any of my patients right now but I can send them cards so I, I send punk post cards to, to my patients every single week and I, like one of my ladies just loves bright colors and loves flowers so anytime I have a, 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 a card that goes out to them I ask them to make it really bright and cheery and, and do a bunch of flowers and she just absolutely loves it so in terms of like the cost on something like this, it's basically the same as if you were going to say the grocery store or Hallmark and picking up a card, but then you don't have to mail it. It does it for you. But I will say Punk Post does have an option that if say you want to hand deliver the card, you can have it mailed to you and then you can hand deliver it as well. But it's, I'm, I'm telling you, you'll look like a rock star. It's like five to $6. Zoom. So we all know about Zoom, right? Like Zoom's like we're doing Zoom right here. So Zoom was something that like we got involved in before it was cool, right? So it's just, you know, we have like a lot of clients and things like that being able to, um, we have all, clients all around the world. And so we've always tried to tell them like, look, um, we'll meet however you want. If you want to do a phone thing, we can do a phone thing. If you want to do a video thing, we can do a video thing. If you want to do in person, we'll do that. So it's just, I think that's one of the things, and that's like a millennial thing, is being able to meet people where they are and meet people on how they want to do it because everybody is different. Um, but the Zoom has been fun, especially during COVID, um, of being able to get kind of a personal connection where we, you know, we can't, like especially in New York, I don't know the next time we're going to see somebody. So, so here's my playbook, and I'm going to give some examples of this here in a second. So this is a social media strategy that we live and die by. So um, my good friend, I think a lot of you guys probably know her, Kristen Andre, um, that's written a few books, and she has a new book coming out. I think it's called um, You're Not For Everyone. <laughs> so, um, but so she told me years ago, she said, Susan, you got to look at doing a third, a third, a third. And when it comes to social media strategy. So what I mean by that is a third where you're educating the public. So, you know, maybe there's a, you know, a DOL rule that's coming down the pike or something like that, that you want to educate, or there's a new bill that's, that, you know, means something crucial to your clients. So, or even just, um, I'll tell you where a lot of our education has been coming from on COVID is like returning back to work, you know, helping educate our clients on different strategies that they can take a look at. So, you know, we'll do a third of things like that or sharing an article. We do a lot of, uh, we do Cyber Saturday where we're sharing a lot about cyber liability. A third where you're recognizing somebody else. So this can go back, you can use that, that news of LinkedIn, you know, type of thing to recognize somebody else, you know, share, you know, something that somebody else is, is doing that's great. And I, like I said, I'm going to show a couple examples here in a second. Um, but it's, it's recognizing somebody else and the work that they're being done. So whether it's like sharing an article, reposting a blog, um, I will tell you like in any given day, there is somebody in the world that got an award today, right? So even if you don't know the person you can still recognize them nobody needs to know that you don't know them but so it's just like it's just shining the spotlight on somebody else like you know Cheryl does a great job of this I mean Cheryl like this morning I saw when I like checked Facebook she had tagged me she's like Susan Combs is speaking today on Neva and so um, I was like that's really cool that that she did that so it's it also what that does is it builds social capital with that person especially if you're doing that for networking people or for your clients I mean don't forget about your clients. I mean, I would also encourage you to look at setting up, say, Google alerts for maybe your top 10 clients. So anytime that they're in the news, like you're, you're giving them some extra love or you're at least like sending them an email to recognize them. Um, and then a third where you're showing that you're a person. And I know like, hey, I know I'm not securities licensed, right? So I have a lot more flexibility than some of you people do. Um, but showing the person, I mean, you know, Cheryl and I are both into CrossFit. So 
you know, I post my workouts almost every single day. As I mentioned before, I'm a big, you know, Royals and Chiefs fan. And so, you know, sometimes I'm like live tweeting during games and, um, you know, everybody's laughing. My husband's a 49ers fan and above our bed, we have a, you know, picture of the, you know, Chiefs logo and the 49ers logo. So let me just tell you that Super Bowl was interesting in our house this year. We were in separate rooms. So, um, but, you know, but people know that and people thought it was fun. So, you know, whether it's just, you know, sh sharing the personal side of yourself. I mean, I think some people are so worried about doing that. And I know everybody has different things about kids and not wanting to share some things and that, you know, that's completely your prerogative, but, you know, showing the human side of you um, allows your people to connect with you on a, on a different level. Um, so the other thing that we look at doing is um, we do have some themes and that's what I'm going to show you next. Um, we use Hootsuite um, and I think Hootsuite is something uh, like a lot of financial planners are able to do. Hootsuite's kind of like an aggregator and like a, a, a platform to share your social media. So you know you have a dashboard and I, I can't remember how many they allow for free um, but then it's it's a pretty low rate if you wanted to have unlimited platforms but then what you could do is you can go ahead and pre-schedule some of these things. Um, um, so if you have some themes, like we have motivation, you know, mentor Monday, um, we have Wonder Woman Wednesday, which is today, and then we have either feature Friday or, uh, or fun fact Friday. So those are kind of some of the themes that we've done. And then when it comes to um, like November, we usually do thankful Thursday. And so we'll do kind of some smattering um, of things. But we also use a, um, a site called Pick Monkey. So if you're looking for, here, I'll just show you my next screen. Oh, have one. Everybody has fun, right? But um, so when we go to the next page, so these infographics are an example of what we did on that pick monkey. So pick, pick, pick monkey. Um, I feel like we pay. I feel like it's under a hundred bucks a year or something like that. But then we can do all these great, really cool um, kind of uh, infographics with them. So you know, to the left, that's an example of a mentor Monday, and so. When my staff members will go out and just get really cool quotes, you know, pictorial quotes, and then post them and then just do kind of like a really inspiring, uh, you know, note with a share. And then the Wonder Woman Wednesday is something that's very near and dear to my heart because I always try to lift some women up that are in our industry. Um, I write an article on a monthly basis for Benefits Pro. And so all the women that are featured in the article are always featured in our Wonder Woman Wednesday. Um, but then also we um, feature other women too. So whether it's our female clients or say somebody comes to us and say, hey, I have this great woman um, that I think you should share. And so all that Wonder Woman Wednesday is we ask them to, to let us know in the past 12 months what's been your greatest accomplishment. So it, it also, um, women can be horrible self-promoters and uh, they can have a hard time like bragging on themselves. So I make them, you know, some of them step outside their comfort zone. I said, this is not a we, this is not a R, this is an I. This is what you've done. You know, take the opportunity, you know, if it's I led a team, that's fine. But just talk about kind of what, what you've been working on. I mean, so we have Angie Rabufo. I know she's an AFA member, um, and I think uh, several of you know her too. And then the one on the right is an example of one of our clients. So that's a feature Friday. So we had, you know, him share kind of uh, what they had been working on in the past. And we do, um, if you know, sometimes we'll do feature Friday, but then sometimes we'll do fun fact Friday. And so that's been something that's been interesting that um, another one of my uh, staff members, he works on, on getting just really cool facts. And so I look forward to that stuff too, because it's, I don't, I see it when you guys see it. Um, and then, you know, Feature Friday, the other thing we do um, with that is during the month of December, we always partner with a, a charity. And so that kind of goes back to the millennial point that I made earlier. And with the, the charity, um, we profile them every single Friday um, during the month of December and just try to give some, some notoriety and give back to them as well. Any questions on that stuff? Susan, we have a couple of comments as well as questions. Go for it. So, um, we got a number of comments about just all of the great information you're sharing, that it's very helpful. You're an inspirational encyclopedia of information, um, that you rock. Let's see, you're a gem. Uh, but the questions we have are, one, well, actually one comment in regards to Buffer is a great option like Hootsuite. And uh, that's from Michael. And Taylor Collins says there's great. also a site called Ink for cards. Okay. Ink uh, is for cards too? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then the other, the question is from Sherry, uh, Sherry, do you have to use the felt app on your phone or is it available to download and use on a laptop? 
Um, the felt out app, I'm not sure about because I've only just used it on my phone, but I know with the punk post, you can do both. Um, so, you know, I would just go to the website and see what you can find out. But, um, you know, because the kind of the cool thing is with the um, with the felt app is like I can I can even write it in my handwriting um, for the card to be sent. Um, so I feel like that's a Becky Brothers trick. I feel like maybe I learned about punk or felt from her or Christy Allison, one of, one of the two, you know, NAFA, WRFS ladies. So, um, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. Anything else, Cheryl? No, nope, that's it. Okay. So now we're going to hit into teams. Okay. So team strategy. I'm a big person when it comes to teams. So I'm going to kind of show, so I have my work team, right? So with my work team, we have calendar management. So I will tell you, um, the sooner you can hand off your calendar to somebody, the more efficient you're going to be. Uh, and this goes back to looking at what you're worth per hour. Um, because if you, I mean, you know, as well as I know, like when somebody wants to get together and um, I know COVID's kind of shifted things around, but if, if, if you're trying to meet somebody for coffee and it's like five emails back and forth just to coordinate. And I know there's a lot of sources now like cal Calendarly and things like that that make things much easier. But I, I handed this off a while ago um, because the other thing that Calendarly doesn't do is helps you coordinate a spot. And when you're in New York City, that can be tricky. So my whole thing has always been, I'll go east or west, north or south, but I won't do both. Because if it takes me, if you ask me to come to the Upper West Side and it takes me over an hour to get there and then I burn an hour and then it's an hour back, then it's like basically half my day is gone. So, you know, what my staff will do is ask the person where they're coming from and then they'll, they'll say, they'll know where I'm coming from and then they'll figure out a midway point. I, I can't even tell you how complimentary people have been at that because it takes it off their plate. They don't have to think about it. And then also it's people have, um, it's showing that I'm respectful of their time. And so that's been something that's been very good for us. Um, emails handled backwards. I think a lot of people do this at this point. I mean, I learned this when I was national president at WIFS because I started at the bottom and then I would be going up and then I found that I was doing work that my staff had already done and that it was just stupid. So doesn't, I mean, yes, like, I mean, after I get off this, this call today, I know I'm going to have a bunch of emails. And yes, if you emailed two minutes ago, you're going to get a response quicker than somebody that emailed an hour ago. But I just found that then there's less double work. Excuse me. Um, another thing we look at doing is Friday forecast. So with Friday forecast, it's just like it's looking forward for the week. Um, so taking a look and saying like, okay, you know what, what is booked for next week and where can we fill in? So if like we take a look at, at Friday and at, for next week and say, okay, you know what, I have four prospecting meetings, but Thursday is wide open type of thing. Then we know, okay, like that's a good day to try to schedule like one-on-ones or schedule some other prospect meetings. So that's something that's been, you know, important for me, but then also too, it's like, I also know like if it's travel, so then I know where I can fill things in. And the three strikes, you know, I mentioned about that before, you know, like uh, three strikes also uh, like uh, applies to networking too. So my thing is with networking is like, if you know, show me, I will never meet with you again, ever, ever, ever. Like you didn't have the common courtesy to shoot me an email, shoot me a text, like, and we confirmed the day before, I will never meet with you again. Um, but if like, you know, somebody has to reschedule, like I get that life happens, things come up fine. Um, you know, you have to reschedule, but if you're somebody that's had to reschedule on me three times, I'm done. And it doesn't mean you're not a good person, but it just means that there's something in your life that's creating chaos. And I don't need to bring that to my house. And then, because the other thing about it is like, if you are, are that discombobulated where you have to reschedule on me three times, you're going to do that to my clients. And I can't run the risk of you making a bad impression on one of my clients because it's too precious to me. So, you know, it's just something that we've kind of come up with and it just makes things, I mean, I had a guy that jumped, <laughs> jumped the turnstiles at a subway because he's like, oh my God, three strikes in my mouth, three strikes in my mouth. I got to show up this time. <laughs> so, um, but he did. Uh, and, you know, and then we have a good networking relationship. Um, we also have a zero email rule. This typically pertains to Fridays. I mean, I try to do it every single day. Um, this is something that, man, I got when I was sitting in between, uh, hey, a couple of Florida ladies um, uh, from, from WRFS, uh, Nancy Wolf-Smith, that I think you, some of you guys know because she's active in NAFA. 
and uh, Michelle Green. And we had um, Wendy Elan in as a speaker and she was talking about organizing and she said, you have to file all your emails. And I was sitting in between these two ladies, high producers, you know, this is about, I don't know, 10, 10 years ago. And I have my computer under the seat in front of me. And I looked at, you know, Nancy and I said, well, how many emails do you have? And she looked, she's like seven, but I, you know, like I've been in this meeting and Michelle's like four. And I, I like kind of crunched down in my chair and they said, Susan, how many do you have? They made me open my computer right in front of them. I had over 19,000 emails in my inbox. And they were like, Susan, you can't do that. And so they said, you have until November 1st. This was October 21st, mind you. They said, you have until October or uh, November 1st to get these all filed. And so I did it. I sat on my couch for hours, just like watching TV, like putting in the names of clients, clicking on the first one, clicking on the bottom one, throwing in the files, throwing in the files, throwing in the files. And so, and then um, I, I don't do it anymore, but for like probably a good like four years, once a quarter, I would send them a screenshot of my emails all filed because I was just so proud of myself. But this has been something that I've also implemented in my office because it just, I'll tell you, it makes you feel so good, right? And then it's just also super organized because the thing you have to keep in mind too is if you're having staff do this is who's there now? next right so it's just like if there's if there's going to be a time where say they're promoted or somebody else comes in in their role or they're splitting the role if you have an organized email system then somebody can just pick pick it up and run so it's just like they can look at the back back history personal growth um cheryl knows me well um i can I can be a bit reactionary <laughs> sometimes. So, um, you know, everybody has that feeling. Like if you read an email or you get a call and you think to yourself, what the blank, you need to sleep on it before you respond because inadvertently you are going to respond emotionally even if you don't think you are. So I, and I got this when I was WFS national president. So, um, so I have a sleep on it folder where I just, you know, something's like just ticks me off. I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait here. And then tomorrow I'm going to look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. I also have a tone checker. Um, because if you had that email that made you kind of bristle up, you are going to respond emotionally, even though you don't think you are, or like, you know, my husband says to me all the time, it is not your role to be the moral compass for everybody. <laughs> and because sometimes when I'm responding to an email, I feel like I need to educate them on why they're wrong. That's not my business, right? I need to own my side of the street. So have somebody that's a tone checker, whether it's somebody in your office, if it's a big thing and it's somebody, I mean, I have a lot of peer to peer mentors, um, send it over to them, have them just read through it, make sure and so you don't get yourself into trouble. Um, professional development, I think is hugely, hugely important. I mean, you guys that are on the call today, I mean, this, one of the reasons you're here is because you value your professional development and getting some, some tools and, and tips. So I think that, you know, don't forget to invest in yourself. I think that's, that's really, really important. And then, you know, understand what you want to control. I mean, one thing I learned a long time ago, I mean, there's a million ways to get from A to B, right? And so I always tell my staff, I don't care how you get to be just get to be this is how I get to be but your brain works differently so you might you know you might want to do it a little bit differently so um, you know and just when you delegate something you got to let go and know that it might not be exactly how you would do, do it but it's gonna be okay and then lastly I'll give you my home team my home team, I share my calendar. I've shared my calendar with my husband for years because you know what? Like when he tells me like, hey, do you want to have dinner with so-and-so? Like, I don't have time for that. Remember, I know my hourly rate. You figure it out. Here's my calendar. So, you know, having that you know, shared calendar, I think is, is a good thing. Um, it just, you know, just makes my life easier. Also managing expectations. I mean, we all know this industry can just kill you at times, right? Especially if there's people on here that are new, you're not gonna really have a life for the first three years. If nobody told you that, I'm telling you that now. Bust your ass for three years and then you can just really soar. But you also have to manage expectations with your home. Like if you're going to have to you know, network at night, if you're going to have to do some appointments on the weekends, just manage the expectations at home. And I guarantee you, I mean, I've been with my husband for 16 years and we got a solid thing going. Um, it'll, it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, and then, you know, just kind of some things that I do, like pre-cook your meals on Sunday. I mean, a lot of people, I think more and more people do that. And also like, this is more for the ladies out there, get a housekeeper, you know, 
comes back to what is your hourly worth. If you, and I, hey, I'm from a town, my father was a two-star general, my mom was around, you know, like she was an entrepreneur, but she didn't go back to work until I was eight. You know, we didn't have a house, you know, house cleaner, or housekeeper or whatever, because it's the Midwest woman guilt mentality that we, we can, we can do it, we don't need to. But go back to what your hourly worth is. And if you're like, you know what, I can pay somebody, I mean, in New York City, I pay somebody, I have a man housekeeper, ladies. So, um, um, so my, my housekeeper, I pay 120 bucks a week. He does my laundry. He cleans my house every single week. He's there for four to six hours. You know, going back to what I said, you know, I'm worth about 250 bucks an hour. Is that a win-win for me to do on my own? Absolutely not. So be okay with that. I mean, it's not a failure to do that. Um, and also it's okay to take some time for you. I mean, you, you guys are in, you know, guys and gals are down in Florida, right? So I'm sure you guys sneak off and do that beach day, um, you know, every once in a while. And I think that's something that's very, very important to take that time to recharge your battery, to not answer the emails and also have that that line because you know I tell people all the time man if you start emailing clients at nine o'clock at night they are always going to expect you to email at nine o'clock at night so you're shooting yourself in the foot so you know have those boundaries have those times I mean I'll tell you in New York City when it's a hot summer day you'll see a lot of salespeople in a movie theater I mean not now with COVID because they're not open but it's something that that I think is okay to do or if you're going on a professional development thing schedule you know a, a spa day or you know go golf or do some things like that I think is really really good okay any questions before we hit the unsolicited advice and wrap it up uh, no we just have one comment that uh, mommy mental health days are a must mm -hmm. and, uh, beach time is a mental health time yeah absolutely absolutely I think that's great Sorry, I had my own timer set okay so this is my unsolicited advice this is stuff that I have learned along the way that um, that has just helped me. So I think some of you guys will get some stuff out of this. So never use, use a $10 one when you can use a nickel one. I had an aunt that had a dress shop in King City, Missouri, where I'm from for 35 years. And I had an entrepreneurship project when I was in high school. And I remember she told me that. She said, you know, Susan, if you use the, the big words, you know, she's like, there's nothing wrong with that. But some people could think you're putting on airs and, um, and you know, too big for your britches, as we say in Missouri. But so that's something that I always thought was really, really important. Always find a common bond. I used to be a paychecks girl before I got into insurance full time. And I learned that up in Rochester, New York, where they always say, you know, this is just building rapport, right? So it's like you go into a meeting, look around their office. I mean, I'm in my conference room right now, so you don't see all the cool stuff that I have in my office. But if you came to my office, I have a lot of Wonder Woman stuff. I have chief stuff. I have something that you can make a comment on that you'll like. And so, you know, find something in their desk. If they have a picture of family, you know, it's the family they like. If they didn't like the family, they wouldn't have the picture there right so make a comment if if um, if the wife's ugly say her hair is pretty right you know I mean? just look at making a connection um, don't ask somebody to do something that you wouldn't do yourself uh, so this is kind of a joke in my office at this point because like anytime I add a baby onto a health insurance plan people like stand up and clap because I'm so proud of myself that I still did it but I can still do it I learned this when I used to do um, concerts and sporting events for the University of Missouri and during like a concert day I would have a staff of 200 300 people and I would be in there schlepping with them I would be lifting the kegs I would be setting the chairs I'd be doing all that stuff because it it gave me respect and it gave me like credibility with my staff. And I think that's something so important that as you kind of rise through the ranks or you add some more staff, you have to keep humble and be willing to do things. And so, you know, if, if it's a job that you're like, there's no way in hell I would do that, then why do you think somebody else would want to do that? Unless their brain's a little bit different and they get, you know, all excited about it. Develop the skill of tenacity. Uh, I thought this was something that you could teach. You cannot. If your people do not have it, they will never have it. So we call this the ability to find the answer. I think in this day and age, I mean, a lot of times, and a lot of times with millennials, if they Google something they can't find it, they'll throw their hands up. Google is great, but it's not everything. So I think that, you know, having that tenacious attitude where, you know, it's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll find out and you have to get back to the client. I think it's, a lot of times people are afraid to say, I don't know. And I think that that also gives you a lot more of a human factor. So hone that skill. This is from my dad. My, my father passed away, um, uh, I guess almost two years ago now, and he was a two-star general, and he used to say, be careful of the toes you step on today because they may be connected to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow. 
Um, because, you know, and it's just be kind is what it comes down to because, you know, especially like say, you know, we've all lost clients, right? You've all had clients that have gone some, some other place, you know, maybe they um, have a new business partner and they wanted to bring in their insurance people or what have you. Be kind on the exit, you know, ask how you can do better, leave the door open saying, you know, um, if we can ever be any help in the future, if you ever want a second pair of eyes on it, just let us know. Because I'll tell you, that'll leave such a good impression with them because you just never know what the future holds. Um, not that we friend our clients on Facebook that aren't truly our friends, but we always say if we wouldn't friend you on Facebook, we won't, don't want you as a client. So this kind of comes back to, you know, I don't know, about eight years ago, I saw we had clients that had the cringe factor. When you saw their number calling on, you know, calling on caller ID, you were like, ah, I want to talk to them. And so, you know what, if you have clients like that, you're not doing the best you can in terms of service for them. So we always, you know, like I said earlier, like minds attract like minds. So having those people that you enjoy working with, I think will just make you just so much happier in life. Um, my mom used to say this to me, don't let your alligator mouth overload your tadpole behind. Um, so that's just like not get too big for your britches. I mean, I think sometimes we can all shoot our mouths off, but we have to, you know, kind of remember to keep it in check. And then, like I said earlier, that my mom always used to tell me, if you don't value your time, no one else will. So I think that's something that, that um, we just always have to be mindful of. I mean, it goes back to how much you're worth and um, not giving everything away for free. And then get a mentor and get involved. I mean, I think there's a lot of mentors. I mean, and not just like, you know, mentors where it's like somebody that, that has what you want and you want to be connected to them. Look at peer-to-peer -peer mentors. I mean, I look at Cheryl as one of my peer-to-peer -peer mentors. Julie McNeely is one of my peer-to-peer -peer mentors. Having people all across the country that are in a similar role that I'm in that I can say, hey, can I bounce this idea off you? Or, hey, have you ever had this situation with a client? Like, what would you do in my situation or in staffing? And then also get involved. I mean, you guys are involved in NAFA. That's why you're on this, on this call right now. But you know what you get, what you give, right? So it's just like if you're paying your dues and saying like, oh, what's NAFA done for me? Well, you know, what, what have you done for NAFA? What have you plugged in and used? Um, so I think there's a lot of resources, but, you know, you can't stand in the middle of a room saying who's going to save me. You have to take some action. Okay, and that's it. That's my contact information. I'm, I'm the only Susan Combs in New York City um, on LinkedIn. In if you want to stay connected. Um, the insurance vixen is my Twitter. That's n not a um, braggadocious thing. Uh, a vixen is a female fox and they're very clever. So that's how that came about. Um, Instagram, Combs and Company. Um, and I am on, on Facebook as well. So um, with that, I'm going to open it up to any questions. Um, I think we're right at one o'clock. Yep. I, I don't have any questions in the chat room. We've got a lot of really good positive responses from people. Just fantastic presentation great presentation. Um, they want to know they can get a recording of this um, presentation on our NAFA website. I've shared that link. And I've also shared Susan's LinkedIn uh, link on the chat button as well. And again, all of the messages just keep coming up on how um, excited everyone was about this presentation. And I will um, make sure that we have access to some of those other links that she shared as well. So um, Thank you, Susan, for uh, presenting today. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Joe to close us off. Thank you, Cheryl. And what a fantastic job, Susan. Thank you so much uh, for contributing uh, all that you said today. And uh, I want to remind people that uh, they can still sign up for the NAFA IFA pack tips and sips tomorrow. And I can get this to work uh, and oh yeah and also uh, just a quick reminder for those who may have not joined us previously that we have several things uh, going on in the NAFA Federation number one uh, our NAFA performance plus purpose conference has gone virtual for 2020 so save the date October 6th through the 8th more information will be available on the NAFA website nafa.org in the coming weeks uh, also um, Today, today is July 15th, which is the last day to take the member survey, uh, the NAFA, uh, NAFA member survey and enter into a contest to win $500 gift card. Also, we're promoting the Idea Incubator. Share your ideas at idea at nafa-florida.org. Help us become a better organization.
Uh, if you're looking for professional content, sales tips, motivation, and so forth, uh, make sure you're reading Advisor Today, put out by NAFA every other month. It's virtual. It comes right to your email. You, be, you do need to be a member. Same is true for the NAFA Florida e-journal. comes out monthly. And if you're not getting these publications, let us know. We'll guide you through that process. And just a heads up, uh, NAFA is developing a virtual version of the Leadership and Life Institute, Lilly. So um, I encourage you to visit nafa-florida.org and nafa.org for more information. And we welcome you to join us again tomorrow at the same time, same place, for John Wheeler, who will be commenting on the effects of how to counter the effects of market volatility. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Hope you really enjoyed today's presentation and got a lot out of it. If you have any thoughts or comments, please let us know. If there is uh, uh, someone that you know that may benefit from um, these types of events, share the message and we'll be happy to welcome them on. Thank you and have a great day.